In this video, I'm gonna show you how to install a door. And if you're new to this channel, my name's Josh. This channel is all about building your own house, saving a ton of money. So be sure to subscribe, ring that bell so you get a notification every time I release a new video, and hammer that like button for me. That's all I ask in return for making this video. So if you're wondering what type of door this is, it's a fire-rated door. Let me explain. This is the opening between the garage and the inside of the house because this is an attached garage. And in my jurisdiction, I gotta install a door there that has a 20-minute fire rating on it. A standard steel exterior door will not cut it. And if you remember from my drywall video, the drywall on the parameter of the garage has to be fire rated as well. Now that we got that out of the way, let's get to installing this door. When you first get your door, you need to unpackage it, of course, but there's something I want to point out. Every door has these little plugs that you got to take out. And this one, you just got to pull up on this and it releases the plug and then you just push it back through and take it out of the doorknob hole and then you're ready to go. And then let me show you something else about the unpackaging here on the side of the door. A lot of times these doors are packaged with staples and pasteboard. So all you gotta do is take your hammer, pull the pasteboard off, and you don't have to worry about taking these staples out. All you gotta do is just tap them into the door frame. And now we're ready to go. Make sure the floor is clean in which the door is going to be setting on. Before we set the door in the opening, first we need to check and see how level the floor is. So it looks like this side is about an eighth inch too low. So what we're going to do is just take a shim and shim it up to about where we need it. So the easiest way I found to do this is go ahead and put your level on the floor. And I'm looking here, it looks like this side needs to go up a little bit. So all I'm going to do now is just take my shim and slide it under the level until your bubble is in the very center. So that looks really good. So now we know that shin's gonna do the trick and then we move the level out of the way. Another good idea is to check the sides of the opening and make sure they're pretty plumb. So this one looks perfect and that one looks really good. So we don't have to worry about the sides doing anything fancy. So all we had to do is shim this side up a little bit. Now we're ready for some liquid nails. So now I'm gonna take this liquid nails and put it down here before I set the door. And I had a tube of this left over, this subfloor adhesive. So you can use subfloor or projects line of the liquid nails. So, and you also don't need a tube this big. The small tube's fine, but I just had this left over. So now just put a liberal bead right across the bottom of the opening, right like this. And I always try to put a nice little wave, something like that. So now it's time to set the door in the opening. And a little trick when you're working alone is just open the door up and then it'll sit there by itself until you get all your tools ready. The doors typically come with rain screws like you see here, but I usually upgrade to these three and a half inch decking screws. I feel like they're way stronger and have a better hold. So I need four of my decking screws and my impact driver to set this door. Now I got my impact driver and a three and a half inch decking screw ready to go. So now all I got to do is push this door frame flush with the drywall and put it in so it holds the door into place. So we can do that pretty easy. So now the screw is holding the door and now we just gotta make sure it's plumbed and check the reveal. So now that we got a screw in the top hinge of the door, the side with the door slab isn't going anywhere right now and it's holding into place. So now we need to come to this side of the door that has the frame loose. So we need to go to the top corner of the door and anchor it flush with the drywall. So we're just gonna take a finish nail and drive it into the door opening to hold the door in the place here. So let's go ahead and do that. And I would typically have my finish nailer with a battery, but I don't have it. I let my brother borrow the tool and I have not seen it in a while. So I have to give him a call here soon, but get it flush and then drive that nail in. Now I'm gonna take this punch and finish driving that nail all the way in. All right, let's check this reveal, see what it looks like. All right, so the door uh, somehow is setting where it needs to be and I don't have to adjust it anymore and that never happens. So um, I kid you not, that really happened. That was not no video editing trick. So that looks good. So the reveal up here is a little tighter on this side of the door than it is on this hinge side. And that's what you want in my opinion because over time the door will settle some and when it settles, 
that side that has the doorknob on it tends to drift down. So if you set it a little high to begin with, it sets level after it's been settling for a while. So that looks good. Now we're gonna check the uh, hen side to see if it's plumb and we're gonna plumb it up. So when it comes to setting these doors, after you got the reveals good, you don't have to plumb it up this way. If the reveals are good, we're good to go. But what we do got to plumb up is this way. If the door is setting in or out too much because it can make this door, when you have it open, want to swing open or shut if it's not setting plumb this way. So let's go ahead and check that. So just the, so you know at what stage we're at, we have an anchor up here in the top, which is that finished nail in the top right corner and the top left, we got the screw and the hinges holding it. So the bottom, we can adjust in and out to set it plumb this way. So if you take a look here, we're flush with the drywall and that's what you want, but you definitely want to double check to see if you're plumb. So if we hold the level on it, that looks really good. So we don't have to adjust it any more than flush with the drywall. So if your wall is setting plumb, your door will set plumb. So that's the importance of framing a house correctly. So if we look over here the same way, if you're flush with the drywall, which we are, we're gonna check it with our level. So we're gonna see if it's setting plumb and it looks really good. Yep, so there's no issues there. So now all we gotta do is put a screw in the bottom hinge and the middle hinge and this side of the door is anchored. Something really important to consider, make sure you leave about a quarter inch gap on each side of the door and that way it gives you a place to put your insulation because if it's tight against this opening, there's nowhere to put your insulation. And now what I'm gonna do is take some shims and push them in tight where each hinge is before I put the screw in because if you don't, it will screw and draw that door over way too much. So always put shims in first. Oftentimes you'll have to remove a hinge screw in order to replace it with one of these decking screws. So I already took that one out. So we're gonna go ahead and draw this in snug. This bottom's good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and place a trim nail in this bottom corner. I'll pre-drill it first. And I like to pull back the weather stripping to install this nail because that way it'll hide the nail. So now the last place I need to put a screw is right here where the door latch is gonna be. I like to put a screw there because it adds a little extra security. So if we shut the door, as you can see, the frame actually needs to go out some. So what I'm gonna do is drive a screw right here where the latch is gonna be, and it's gonna draw that out some so the reveal will look right. So in order to do this, I'm gonna pull the weather stripping back right here because it's a nice place to hide the screw. I'm gonna go ahead and drill it out right beside where the door latch goes. And now I'm gonna take my impact driver with a number two bit on it, or you can use a countersink if you don't have a number two bit, but this just gives a place for the screw head to uh, countersink in. It's a poor man's countersink. Now I'm gonna take my decking screw and my impact driver, and I'm just gonna drive this right through that door frame and now before i snug this up i'm going to put some shims behind this so now i'm going to take these shims slide it in beside the door frame and the opening and just snug it up and now i'm just going to tighten that screw down and let's check the reveal all right so if you shut the door it looks like it's drawn out too much so we got to slide these shims in a little more and tighten it up I'm gonna go ahead and loosen this screw up. Tap these shims in a little more. And we're gonna tighten it back up. All right, now let's check it. And the reveal looks perfect. So we're good to go there now. Now that the door is anchored into place, we gotta go through and cut these shims flush with the door frame. And in order to do that, I like to use an oscillating tool and just cut it flush with the frame. It makes it very easy. You don't want to try to break them and all that stuff. That's too much and you might damage the door. So I just like to use an oscillating tool. If you're wondering if your door is fire rated or not, just open it up and look on the side of the jam. As you can see here, this has a 20 minute rating stamped right on the frame. And also over here on the slab, 
it's listed as well, so the slab also has the rating on it too. On the final inspection, the inspector is going to open up that door and check to make sure it's fire rated. So again, if that's code in your area, make sure you do that. And also, I'm going to use spray foam to go around the door to insulate it. All right, let's test this baby out. It opens up, it stops, it doesn't keep opening up or it doesn't want to close because it's setting plumb and it looks very nice and everything looks good the way we want it and let's go ahead and see if it shuts well nice reveal in the door doesn't look warped or bowed that is something you got to watch because sometimes from the factory these doors can come warped and it's hard to get them to line up correctly so just to forewarn you and if you need to know how to install an exterior door check out this video link it's going to help you out